week one in the National Football League. And thanks for joining me. You're watching Picks with David. We've got five big picks for you today and for the Monday night game combined. And so before we begin with the picks, be sure to like and subscribe to the video so you don't miss any of my picks throughout the NFL season. And now let's get right to it with our first selection. Game number one is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Minnesota Vikings. And both teams have gone through a few changes this offseason. Tampa Bay loses Tom Brady and they bring in Baker Mayfield to start the game for the Bucks. They also lost Leonard Fournette, so Rasheed Rice or White is going to be their lead dog when it comes to running the football. And we've got some disgruntled players on a team that doesn't look to be trying to win the Super Bowl this year. Mike Evans has already said that he doesn't think he wants to come back. We've got some defensive players that are also feeling the same way quietly behind the scenes. And so with the new offensive coordinator and a new quarterback in Baker Mayfield, the Bucks travel to Minnesota, second year for Kevin O'Connell. And, you know, they're in the, still in the Kirk Cousins regime. Uh, they let go of Dalvin Cook, and that means Alexander Madison will be the lead runner for the Vikings. Now, they've added some firepower in Jordan Addison at the wide receiver position. He'll take over for Adam Thielen, who was uh, released and ended up with the Carolina Panthers. But the biggest change for the Vikings, aside from losing some defensive pieces that we all believe as Viking fans was part of the problem, is the hiring of the new defensive coordinator, Brian Flores. His schemes and his style should bring the Minnesota Vikings defense out of the cellar defensively and at least to the middle of the pack this particular year. The Buccaneers on the road with the Vikings. I'm going to take the Minnesota Vikings to win the game. Let's take a look at what DraftKings says. And with our new spotlight this year on sports gambling, we've got Tampa Bay getting five and a half points as the Vikings are favored. Um, I'm not sure that the Vikings can cover the spread. I think it'll be a tight game. Unless the Vikings explode offensively, I'd go with the under. In this particular matchup, I'd take the money line for the Vikings. Let's move on to pick number two. It's the Green Bay Packers at the Chicago Bears. The Packers are going to have Jordan Love now as their starting quarterback as Aaron Rodgers was traded to the Jets. But they've still got a two-headed strong running game in Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. On the other side, you've got the Chicago Bears have brought in some offensive weapons. Now last year, Chase Claypool didn't look like he was interested in being there. Had a hard time in picking up the offense, but he's had a full offseason. And in a trade for the number one pick to Carolina, Chicago landed DJ Moore at wide receiver as well. So the three-headed attack of the wide receivers Moore, Darnell Mooney, and Chase Claypool, I think could be a winner for the Chicago Bears. They, of course, got Cole Komet at tight end. And by trading away Roquan Smith this last season, the Bears were able to pick up a couple of really good defensive players for the kind of money it would have cost them for just one. And so, you know, the Bears are looking a lot better on defense. I think that Justin Fields, if he can have the time with a revamped offensive line, can get the ball down the field to some of his receivers. When it comes to Green Bay, their defense has been lackluster compared to expectations over the last couple of years. But I think that with the team starting to come together and gel with the number of seasons under their belt, perhaps this defense will have enough to stop Justin Fields in his passing game, and that will give Jordan Love an opportunity to make some plays with his receivers as the new starter. I like the Green Bay Packers to actually win this game, Let's see what DraftKings says. 
And you can see here that the Packers are favored by one and a half points. Or excuse me, the Bears are favored by one and a half points. The over under 41 and a half. Um, I expect it to be about that kind of scoring game. I don't think either one of these offenses are going to explode onto the scene. So you might want to take the under in this one. Once again, I like the Green Bay Packers. One and a half points. You might as well take that if you're going to go with the Packers rather than go with the money line. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, for whatever, whatever floats your boat better. I mean, plus, you know, you get plus points on, you know, the money line. And so I would go money line here. Green Bay Packers to beat the Chicago Bears. Game number three is going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers hosting the San Francisco 49ers. And the 49ers are going to begin the year with the guy they finished the season with, Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant at quarterback. He did a spectacular job until injured in the playoffs, and 49ers have all their weapons offensively, with the exception of perhaps George Kittle. But defensively, they will definitely have, be at full strength, I should say. Nick Bosa signed his contract, and he's with the team. The addition of Jerron Hargrave in the middle there uh, really puts a boost on their run defense and their pass rush. I think the 49ers are a formidable team to reckon with this year. But they're playing in the early window in Pittsburgh, and that means that it's going to feel like 9 o'clock in the morning for the 49ers when they play in that noon window, East, or Central Time. So Pittsburgh Steelers come in second year under Kenny Pickett, and he's got some weapons in George Pickens and Deontay Johnson. The running attack is led by Najee Harris, along with Jalen Warren, who started to come on here. The defense is as stout as ever, and they added some veteran leadership in the offseason in Patrick Peterson and uh, Cole Holcomb at linebacker. You'll find that the Pittsburgh Steelers are no slouch, and as they're playing here at home against the 49ers, I think this is going to be the game of the weekend. Going to be a really fun game to watch. I'm looking forward to this one. I like the Pittsburgh Steelers to narrowly edge out the San Francisco 49ers. And DraftKings says that the Steelers are not favored. The 49ers are the favored team here by two and a half. That means that they would have to win the game by a field goal, which is entirely possible. But on the road against the Steelers, I actually think this could be a high-scoring game despite the Heavy defenses here by both these teams. Um, you know, for my money, I'd take the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I think I would go on the over. And so there you have it for that particular game. Let's move on to Sunday Night Football between the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants. It's becoming a staple of the NFL season to see these guys on Sunday night. Dallas comes in, you know, having been in the playoffs, they've got a brand new offensive coordinator, although running the same system, the head coach takes over for Kellen Moore. So Mike McCarthy will be calling plays for Dak Prescott. No Ezekiel Elliott in the game at this point. They, they let him go in the offseason, and that means Tony Pollard is the lead dog. Look for K-State favorite Deuce Vaughn to get some carries in the game. The rookie out of K-State comes in as a sixth-round draft choice. They'll play at the New York Giants here. Daniel Jones with a fresh new contract. Second year under Brian Dayball, the head coach. And, uh, you know, they were able to retain both him and Saquon Barkley. They added some offensive playmakers at wide receiver. And this could be a battle of defenses in this game. Both teams had pretty good offenses. Dallas has been in the top 10 the last several years in a row. The Giants are starting to come on. And although a lot of people are seeing the Giants fall back, you know, this year and out of the playoffs, I think that they're going to have a very good season. I just think that they could be a better team 
but not necessarily have a better record. In this game, I like the Cowboys to uh, you know attack with their new wide receiver, Brandon Cooks, down the field. That'll open it up for new rookie draft pick, uh, Schoonmaker, the tight end. And you'll also see a lot of C.D. Lamb. But I expect them to run the football right at the Giants, keep them off balance. I think that Daniel Jones and company have a chance to win this game, but I like the Dallas Cowboys to win at MetLife Stadium. DraftKings says that the Dallas Cowboys are favored to win the game. On the over-under, once again, I think this will be a lower-scoring game, so I'd take the under. But uh, definitely going with the Dallas Cowboys on the money line, as it'll probably be by a field goal. Monday Night Football, the Buffalo Bills take on the New York Jets and Aaron Rodgers. And what a game this is going to be. This game turns into a battle of heavyweights in the AFC East. Buffalo, of course, has won the division three straight years. They've been in the playoffs, seem to always get trumped up by either the Kansas City Chiefs or last year they come off an embarrassing loss to the Cincinnati Bengals on their own home turf. And so, you know, they're probably looking for to exact some measure of return of their dignity I think that they want to show that they're still a force to reckon with in the AFC. So they've got a lot riding on this particular game to start the year. Want to make a good first impression. Of course, the Jets want to do the same thing. Aaron Rodgers comes over from the Green Bay Packers, and he has a slew of weapons, both at the running back position and at wide receiver. This is a team that had the offensive and defensive rookies of the year last year, in Garrett Wilson and Sauce Gardner, respectively. They've got a fantastic defensive front for the New York Jets, but the Bills also have a very good defensive front. Both teams have wide receiver weapons. Stephon Diggs and, uh, you know, Gabe Davis for the Buffalo Bills. Mecole Hardman, Garrett Wilson for the New York Jets. Um, you know, running the football has been a struggle for the Buffalo Bills over the last few years. The main runner has always turned out to be Josh Allen, and they're trying to protect him and keep him safe. And so, you know, it's going to be up to Damian Harris and James Cook to establish that running game behind a pretty good offensive line to help keep the New York Jets defense off balance and eliminate some of that pass rush as they try to take Josh Allen's head off. On the other side, Dalvin Cook comes in and joins up with rookie sensation who was injured last year, Brees Hall. So they provide a two-headed running attack. Like I said, both teams loaded with weapons, loaded with stars. Going to be a very tight game. But I think because they are playing at home, and don't get me wrong, I think Buffalo will be the better team in the long run this year. But I also believe that the New York Jets are going to be very good early in the season, but the longer that the season goes on, Buffalo will be the better team. But opening night, coming out party for the Jets this year, I'm going to take the New York Jets to win the game at MetLife Stadium on Monday Night Football. DraftKings says that the Buffalo Bills are favored to win the game, and, uh, you know, they only have to win by a field goal in order to cover the spread. Once again, I, I like the Jets to win the game. You can make a lot more money if you take the money line. And as far as over and under, this could be a shootout, this particular game. But the defenses are usually ahead of the offenses in week number one. We saw that in the Detroit Lions-Kansas City game where it was a low-scoring affair, 21-20. This could be a similar situation here, but uh, I think the Jets will score at least 28 points in the game. Could be a 28-20 to 20 final. So there you have it for my week one picks. 
I want to thank everybody for joining me for this week one edition of Picks with David. Be sure to like and subscribe as we move on through the season so you don't miss any of my picks. We'll talk a little fantasy football along the way once we get a handle on how teams are going to act in this 2023 season. I hope you enjoyed my little uh, look at the uh, you know possible sports gambling on each particular game. I know I'm looking forward to playing myself this year as I did last year now that we have sports gambling here in Kansas. And so uh, once again, thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time right here on Picks with David.